Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Doug and uh, back with another video today. Uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how new era, new era caps are constructed. I've had a few videos that cover that already, but what I wanted to do today is actually tear one down. Uh, so as much as that might be heartbreaking to myself and some of my viewers, the time has come for this Astros cap to go. Uh, I've loved it. It's been through a lot of battles with me, a lot of yard work, um, but uh, in the interest of science, we're going to take this apart today and uh, see how some of the construction details really show themselves uh, underneath the hood, so to speak. So stay tuned. So to accomplish this teardown, I'm going to resort to a few simple tools. Um, first up, a couple of utility knives. I'm just going to have these on hand in case I need to uh, cut into any details. Uh, secondly, I figured a good pair of scissors would be available, um, would be potentially useful. But the main tool I'm going to use is actually a set of tin shears, which are normally used to cut flashing around the house uh, on the exterior. But they do a good job of cutting multiple things. So I'm actually going to cut away some sections of the cap, and then we'll take a look. Again with my tin shears here and uh, I'm going to start at the bill, probably come up here, come over to this side and then just avoid the New Era flag logo there. So we're going to see what we can do here. Now these are pretty tough. I do have some good leverage here but seem to be a little stuck. So I'm going to take this offline. You can see what I'm starting to get there. It's just a section through that area. So here we'll transition to the side. Again, I'm going to come just to the side of the New Era logo. Now right here is probably going to be the toughest point because this is the intersection of the sizing, a few folds of the fabric as it's been tucked in, and of course all the sweatband materials. And I actually just got through it without too much difficulty. So let's try and make a turn. I'm going to try and go through the buckram now. I'm going to try and align with my cut down there. And again, right here is where you got a lot of intersections of fabric as these crown panels are brought together. I'm going to go right through the eye, eyelet there, the ventilation hole. Buckram seems to be pretty tough, but I'm getting through it. Apologies to Astros fans out there who are witnessing the destruction. And we're getting to some really, really uh, thick and layered parts of the construction. So I'm going to maybe work on this with a little bit more leverage and I'll let you know how it goes. All right, so I was able to get through this wet band and I'm about to make the final cut here just to link up the cuts that I made from the top all the way through the visor and the trim is going pretty well. Whoop, there we go. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take some detailed photos of what we have here. You can see here we've got the visor construction revealed, um, sweatband construction, and then you can see the layering and the bonding of the buckram here uh, to the fabric panels. Then you can see a little bit of what the seam tape does uh, and how that seam is tucked under. So, all right, so really interesting as I'm working around and I've folded down the sweatband. Um, you can see the presence of the sizing, which is really stiff. Um, you can see all the size markers and when they put this in, where they fold it back to mark it. This was actually a 7 and 5 eighths, um, which is one of the reasons it quickly became a, a scrap cap because these things are harder to um, uh, shrink than stretch. Um, you can't shrink them and keep the appearance very well. So this one became my uh, work around the house kind of cap. So um, you can see the, the marriage of the sizing and the sweatband and the fabric folds, how that's all kind of layered in. And you can see as I pull it apart, some of the seams here, um, how that sweatband is kind of layered in. Um, there's a cushioning layer in there, a foam. I think more nowadays that's probably a black foam in there um, that I've done from mods on other caps. Looks like there's another liner of some sort. Looks like a cheesecloth or, or kind of a non-stiffened version of the buckram. So we're just kind of pulling this apart. Um, yeah, so there's multiple layers in that sweatband, but the sizing is really the thing that determines 
you know, that's a hard, stiff plastic. It's very similar to buckram. And uh, that's really what sets the sizing. And when you're stretching your caps, that's really what you're expanding. Um, the heat uh, really helps with modifying this plastic when you stretch it. So when I recommend that you put it over a teapot uh, or some other, some other source of steam, um, boiling water, whatever form, uh, this the heat from that is what stretches this, and then it's the steam that really stretches the fabric. So when you're stretching a cap or shaping it in some way, um, that's why you need both the heat and the moisture. So uh, we'll take another look at some other areas. So here's another look at that buildup here at the front of the cap. So you can see there's kind of additional complication here created by the buckram um, intersection with the sizing, the visor. So there's multiple layers here. This is what can really build up and sometimes make things uncomfortable in your caps. Um, usually, especially at the seam, um, which probably lines up the logo, which I did not cut through. And then you can see a lot of these where the seam tape has been folded up and under, so you get a lot of extra material. Sometimes, as I've shown in another video, um, that can be a real um, pain for comfort um, because you get these built up materials. Some of them are very stiff and it can create bumps under the sweatband that really press in on your forehead and stuff. So that's just something to look out for. Um, you can get in and modify these. I've got a video on how to do that in one area um, near the front. So. Then really quick, you can see how the, the seam is constructed here, um, kind of folded over, um, and then the seam tape that's applied just to cover that for comfort. So, so here's another bit of detail. I'm just going to try and pull away the fabric here, grab one of my utility knives so I can cut some of the seams. Trying to be safe here and not get the blade too close to my hand, but just pulling away so I can see the actual material of this visor. And, oh, okay, so you can see the perforations there from all the stitching. That must be a, a pretty aggressive uh, <laughs> sewing machine. Yeah, so this is really interesting because it feels, there's been a lot of debate on whether uh, caps uh, use cardboard or plastic or thermoplastic visors. This to me feels like some sort of hybrid. It has a very plastic feel but it definitely feels like um, some kind of composite like it could be a paper cardboard type stock that's used here. You can see some of the fraying um, but it definitely has the texture and feel to my hands as though it's some blend uh, or halfway point between cardboard and plastic. So that is pretty interesting. I've always been curious about that. Boy, another cool thing is I just started to realize that uh, the bonding that's happening between the fabric and the buckram, I'm able to peel this away and uh, may actually take this a little bit further does seem like there's some spots. Uh, I've hit the eyelet hole here. Um, so, so there you can clearly see the backside embroidery through the fabric. Um, I believe that takes place into the front two panels and then it's bonded to the buckram. So that's why you get read through. Um, sometimes you get the shape of the logo. And I've also got a video that shows you how to take care of that in one way. So I did cut away the eyelet and you can just see a little bit more about the residue from the buckram. Now I've torn that away. It does leave kind of this dot pattern from the cheesecloth shape. Um, you can see that the buckram is actually the part that's been stitched here, but then uh, separately the, um, the two front panels of the crown were stitched. It looks like there's a lightweight seam tape there, and the buckram is just put together with the regular black 5950 seam tape. Um, that may all happen at the same time, I'm not sure. So um, I don't think I'm gonna go too far in terms of taking apart the button on top. I'm not too interested in that construction. Um, in fact, this is probably about the length of the detail that I'll go to, just so you can see the seam tape here, pulling that, that seam apart. So you can see one's been folded up, um, attached to the other below. Um, I believe the four panels, they kind of fold them under. 
um, or sorry, the front two panels, they fold them under a fold in the, the next two panels. So you can see sometimes you get that little offset in the height here and you can always see that shadow line. After removing the front two panels from the buckram uh, and exposing it, I actually cut through it again and peeled it apart a little bit. And what that revealed was these black fibers that you can see here. This is uh, some kind of plastic strand, like a nylon. It has a consistency like a toothbrush bristle or a fishing line or something like that. But there's no doubt a lot of the stiffness in the buckram comes from these. And so when you are heating the buckram, either with steam, hair dryer, etc., what you're likely doing is softening the plastic fibers in here. Um, and also when you use steam, you're relaxing the fabric a little bit. So when you're shaping caps, like I've got in some of my other videos, uh, you're actually heating up this plastic and, and reforming it. So that, that was really interesting to find. Um, this is actually somewhat of a vintage. Um, it's actually marked as a diamond collection, new era. I actually got this when I was traveling about, uh, oh gosh, it was probably uh, 20 years ago. And uh, I think the time has come for this one to go as well. I've tried to stretch it, got it a little too small when I first got it. You can hear kind of the crinkly sound of the sweatband. So this is probably a trip back in time in terms of uh, how New Era caps were constructed maybe 20 plus years ago. Again, apologies to Pirates fans. Sorry to make you have to watch this. Anyways, uh, got the cut here going through the thick area of the sweatband. This one's actually been easier to cut, so I don't know what we'll find underneath that makes that true, but uh, final cut here right through that area, and we're good. And you can see there, there's those stitch holes again. Definitely uh, the other one was black, of course, and this one, but it still feels like uh, sort of a cardboard composite material. Maybe it's some kind of blend of plastic and paper. Um, um, but a lot of the things I'm seeing in this cap are very similar. So you can see the buildup like we saw in the Astros cap at the front. The sizing is there. The uh, sweatband liner, the cheesecloth, the foam, that's all there. You can see this foam in here. I've had this cap a lot longer, so it looks a lot different than the, um, the Astros cap there. And, of course, this still had a white sweatband on it. Buckram pretty much looks the same. And in fact, I'm having trouble peeling this one. Could be because the Astros cap a lot of, got a little bit more beat up and it was easy. Oh, here we go. This one separates pretty easily too. So pretty much the same thing, um, which is good to know because I don't think the 5950 construction has changed all that much in uh, the 15 year difference or so that I had between these caps. Again, you can see the same seam construction there and uh, yeah really very similar the interesting thing to me though is that uh, around the edges of the sweatband the one big difference I noticed on the inside it's got this terrible plastic stuff there you can see my hand through or my finger through it it just is creating a lot of noise that's one of the reasons I decided it was time to get rid of this cap um, you can hear the plasticky sound that makes. I used to hate that when I was wearing this cap. There you have it. Uh, two caps torn down. Hopefully that was informative for you. Uh, certainly was for me. The biggest contrast I found were maybe a little bit of difference just in the color. Uh, they seem like the same material in the caps and of course that sweatband thing that I pointed out and that plasticky sound. So 15 years apart, two caps. They served me well. Uh, for what I needed them for. Um, sorry to see them go, but uh, hopefully you learned something from that the way I did. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.